I'm Claire Ridgeway. You'll know me by now, I'm sure, from my daily On This Day in Tudor History videos and my questions about Anne Boleyn series and all the other bits and bobs I do. And this is my husband, Tim, who... Hi, everybody. Some of you may know from our Tudor History Challenges. Yeah, poor old Tim that has to answer questions. We've got to 25,000 uh, YouTube channel subscribers now, so we've decided to do Tudor History Challenge 4. Ooh. So, um, and of course, you can join in on the way uh, and see if you can beat Tim. Now, I'm going to give Tim some help today. I'm going to give him some mascots. First of all, we've got William Shakespeare, who, of course, was very intelligent. And no, then we've got that. Henry VIII, and I'm not quite sure what to say about him, but I'm sure he'll help you in some way. So, okay, are you ready for I'm these As questions? ready as I'll ever be. Yes, go for it. I mean, this is first thing in the morning for us, and I'm all hay fevery, so you might be at an advantage. So, okay. Question number one, and each of these is worth one point until we get to the end, and I'll explain this. Question one. King Henry VII, that's just the stress I'm using on that, united the houses of Lancaster and York by marrying Elizabeth of York. Judd's trying to give you some help as well in the background. But who was Elizabeth's father? So Elizabeth of York got who married to Who was Elizabeth VII. of York's father? Mm -hmm. Edward the Fifth. No. Edward V was a little boy. Fourth? Yeah, but I'm not giving oh, you that. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, Edward V was one of the princes in the town. Now, I'm not giving you a half point for Edward because oh, okay. all these people are called Edward and Henry's and that's that. True, so. Yes. so, nope. He was King Edward the Fourth, and her mother was, of course, Elizabeth Woodville. Okay, question two. Arthur Tudor, Prince of Wales, eldest son of King Henry VII, died at this castle in April 1502. Well, that's a good question. So where did he die? He was in Wales. Pembroke Castle. Pontefract Castle? I don't know. Was I right? Sorry for those of you that live in Yorkshire there. Oh, was he? <laughs> no, but that's where Pontefract oh, okay. Castle is. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were doing very well this morning. And he actually wasn't in Wales either. Oh, okay. Him and Catherine of Aragon have been sent to the Welsh marches. Okay. Ludlow Castle. Ludlow, okay. That's where they were based. That's where, as a Prince of Wales, you were based. Okay. Not good. Number three. Okay, Robert Dudley. Now, you like Robert Dudley. Yes. Okay. Elizabeth I's favourite was Earl of this English city. Robert Dudley, Earl of... Warwick. <laughs> I'm not yeah, actually, you're not too bad there, because his, his brother Ambrose was Earl of Warwick, and his father was Earl of Warwick at one time. So, you know, you're getting close there, and... Of course, he's buried at Warwick, so it you was know, an I, I can understand guess. It was your an educated, educated guess. guess there. Earl of Leicester. Oh, yeah, of course he was. <sighs> Not See, doing well. Everyone was saying that I'm too easy on you, yeah, normally, now so too hard. now I'm being too hard. It's, you go in your question, you, you say the bit of the question that I know, and then you ask something that I don't know. No hope. Okay. Might not much have much hope for this one either. Robert Dudley, yes. we know him, we love him, was married twice. Yes. Okay. First to Amy Robsheart. Okay. Yes. Then to a woman that Elizabeth I called the She Wolf. What was her name? I was going to say Lettice Knollis. Ooh. Would that be right? Oh, yes, it's that you probably pronounce it Knowles. Okay. Lettice Knowles, or I would have accepted Lettice Devereux as well because that's her first married name before she <laughs> married uh, Robert Dudley. Or in fact, I would have accepted Lettice Dudley as well. <laughs> okay, 
See, you actually got that one right. So we've got one point so far. Okay. Number five. What was the name of Lady Jane Grey or Queen Jane's husband? Oh, good one. I think I even know this one. But I've never seen that. Famous, last famous last words. Words. Uh, Guildford Dudley. <gasps> wow. Yay. Yes. Very good. Perhaps you're good at the Dudley family. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Question six. You should know this one. Okay. This one's an easy one. This famous mathematician, astronomer, astrologer, occultist, and philosopher was an advisor to Queen Elizabeth I. What was his name? Very interesting character. John D. Yes, Dr. John D. Me. And he actually, um, with his astrology, he actually, this is some trivia I'm just throwing in here, he actually chose the date for Elizabeth's coronation as an auspicious date for her. Okay, question seven. I hope you're doing well playing along with this. Question seven. True or false, Queen Mary I was 42 years of age when she died on the 17th of November, 1558. You've got a 50% chance here. True I, I have, or false? I have no idea, so I'm going to go for... Hang on. True. <gasps> Henry helps him there, yes. Well That was a guess. Done. That was a well guess. Well done, because she was born in 1516. So. Okay, question eight. Elizabeth I, you should know this one by the way, was said to have been sitting under an oak tree in the estate of this place in 1558 when she was informed that she was queen. She was supposed to be sort of sitting and reading under this tree with her ladies when the men rode up. It's that, that scene where Kate Blanchett is the queen. In I really should know this, but I'm not 100% sure. You should know it, seeing as I've, I've been there. Yes, you've been there, but you've been to, you've been to so many on, places. Online. I'm going to go for Tutbury. No. What was she doing at Tutbury? I don't know. Or, I don't know. Sudley? Keep guessing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've given up. Hatfield. Hatfield, okay. Oh, she was a bit closer to London then. Hatfield House, that was her estate. Oh dear, whoops. I nearly gave you a point oh, there. I'll take that extra no, point. didn't get that one. Okay, I'm sticking to everything. We, we can't have the fan on in here where we're filming. But it means that oh, I'm dying. Okay, Henry VIII. Oh, he's going to help you here. Mary the First and Elizabeth I were all born at this place or at this palace. What is it? Greenwich Palace. Oh, well done, well Yay. done. Greenwich Palace is no longer Doesn't standing today. Doesn't exist anymore. Today. No. There's a, a little plaque on the, on the, on the ground uh, because they built a new sort of the Greenwich uh, around it. Okay, you should get this one. Number 10. In which battle did the Mary Rose, that famous flagship of Henry VIII's, sink on the 19th of July, 1545? Uh, I should get this. You should get this one because we actually spoke about it the other day. We did? Yeah, you actually came up with it. and I, Because I was writing about another battle and you said, is that the battle of that? And I went, no, it's another one. I'm actually not going to be able to give you an answer for this one. But it was just off Portsmouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Henry VIII actually saw it happen. No, I can't give you an answer for that one. Battle of the Solent. Oh, OK. Mm. Nearly gave you a point for that one, too, then. <laughs> Number 11. These are hard. I know. Mm. <laughs> King Edward VI Council. OK, so Edward VI. Yeah. He's king. His council was led first by Edward Seymour, his uncle, as Lord Protector, and then by another man as Lord President, Lord President of the Council. Oh, this is far Who too was complicated. That man? So you've got two leaders in Edward VI's reign. Howard. Tom <laughs> Thomas Howard. 
Oh dear. For those that have complained about how easy I am on him, I hope you're uh, rubbing your hands with glee here. No. John Dudley, your favourite family. Okay, well, yeah. Robert have... Dudley's father. Pick a, pick a family, a Tudor family. John Dudley, Duke of Northumberland, led as the second leader. And it was John Dudley who was there when Edward VI, you know, died and who then helped with Lady Jane Grey. You know, the transition. Before my time. Well, it was before your time, yes. It's okay. That's a good excuse. Number 12. Oh, dear. What was the name of the war between Scotland and England from 1543 to 1551, which aimed to make Scotland, to force Scotland to marry off Mary, Queen of Scots, to Henry VIII's son, Edward? I'm going to have to take a guess on that. Was it the rough wooing? Woo! Oh, I didn't expect you to know that. That was a random rough thing. wooing. <laughs> you like that name, do you? That one's stuck in your head. Yeah, yeah I was right. Yes, because there'd been a treaty between Scotland and England with this marriage, but then Scotland backed off. So, number 13. I'm probably turning purple. I'm getting really old. Number 13. Which Elizabethan playwright wrote Dr Faustus, Tamerlane and the Jew of Malta? You should get this one, because I had to study Dr Faustus and we ended up watching it quite a bit. Oh, the obvious guess would have to be Shakespeare, but it's not Shakespeare. You better ask him. <laughs> mm, he's not sure, he can't remember. <laughs> perhaps he wrote them, but he didn't. But <laughs> yes, no, I don't know. Well, who's the other guy? Marlowe. Oh, do I give him this one? I don't know. That's Christopher Marlowe. Christopher Marlowe. Yeah. Do I give you... Uh, yes. I'll have a point for that one. I need every point I, I can really get. I really helped you there. <laughs> the other one. Kit Marlowe. Yes, Christopher Marlowe. Came to a rather sticky end, he did. He, yes, in that sort of brawl. Yes, okay. Number 14. I reckon you'll get this one. This Protestant woman was illegally racked before being burnt at the stake. She was burnt at the stake on the 16th of July, 1546, for heresy. That's a good question, and I do know the answer to that. Anne Askew. Yes, well done, my man. Yay. I think I would have been cross with you if you hadn't got that one. It's like, do I teach him nothing? <laughs> Number 15. Okay. You should get this one as well, because I like this person. This Tudor woman had a dog that she named Gardner after her enemy, Bishop Stephen Gardner, and she would dress this dog in a vestment and process around in a mock parade to humiliate the bishop. I'm going to have to guess Anne Boleyn, <laughs> but I don't know. No. No? Who? She liked to call him to heel. And, you know, I can imagine Anne Boleyn doing something like yeah, that. Yeah, actually, yeah. No, Catherine Willoughby, or Catherine Brandon, Duchess of Suffolk, Charles Brandon's wife. Oh dear, oops, I'm giving you a point. I like giving points away. Right, oh, this is bonus question now, and this is actually worth three points, possibly, because it's got three, there are three answers. So okay. I'll give you a point for Wish each answer. So, Mary, Queen of Scots, was married three times. Oh. Yeah. Can you name all three of her husbands? So you've got a possible three points here. I really ought to know that. Well, can you name any of but them? But actually, I'm probably going to end up naming none of them. But I've just done a load of on this day in history well, videos yes. about how you've been editing them. And the Tudor Society magazine's all about the Stuarts and uh, Oh dear. And I I'm having There's a None of this kind of, you know no. going into your head. Uh, no, not at all. You I'm, can't name a single husband no. of Mary Queen of Scots. No. Some of them didn't last very long. I really hope you're doing better than Tim. Okay, first of all, we have the husband that she married when she was quite young. Francis II of France, or oh, yes. Francois. 
yes. the second of France. Okay, and he died. He got an ear infection and it went a bit nasty. Didn't have antibiotics in those days. Then she married... No, it's just not, not there, is it? Not at all. Henry Stuart, Lord Darnley, who was, of course, the uh, son of Lady Margaret Douglas. No, you just... And then, meaning nothing. and then James Hepburn, Earl of Bothwell. I think it was fourth Earl of Bothwell. And um, how did you do? Better than me? I really hope so. So out of a possible three points, we have zero for that one for Tim. Okay, I'm going to count up now. I'm sticking to everything because I'm so far. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight out of a possible 18 points. Pretty good. I'm pretty sure that I've done that right. Yeah, you're right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight out of 18. I, well, that one is, could do much better. Complete failure, loser. (laughs) Thank you, darling. The bells are ringing out. They're like, they're not impressed with you at all. So 25,000 subscribers. 25,000 subscribers and I hope I hope these 25,000 subscribers that the Tudor history is actually you know going into into you lords and ladies I really hope and I hope that you've done much better than Tim but if not then don't worry because we've got how many months more of uh, on this day in Tudor history uh, talks where you can uh, learn lots more about our favourite royal dynasty So uh, stay tuned for lots more Tudor goodies. So thank you, Tim, for letting me... uh, I can revise between now and 30,000. Yes, yes, you need to revise. Hopefully next time I'll be better. Yes, you need to. He needs to revise. Thanks for watching. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.